I'll clarify you how wave plates change polarizations of light. So this is a half wave plate, and this is a quarter wave plate. They look almost identical, so when you purchase them, you have to make sure that they have labels or you label them. I just colored them differently for the educational purpose. And this is the example of an actual image. So we can rotate this either in the clockwise or the counterclockwise direction. And wave plates are also called wave retarders. Before I get into this topic, let me briefly explain you about the polarizations of light. You all know that an electromagnetic wave consists of electric and magnetic polarization vectors. And we also call electromagnetic wave light. In experiments, people normally refer electric polarization as the polarization of the electromagnetic wave. So this case is where we have a vertically polarized light since the electric polarization vector is oscillating vertically. And why people prefer the electric polarization over the magnetic polarization? We normally use wave plates to change polarizations of light. And polarizations change in the wave plate because of refraction. But the refractive index is about the strength of electric field interactions in the medium. So in this case, the medium is the wave plate. Therefore, a wave plate changes the electric polarization, so we should go with that. Now, what types of polarization are there? Horizontal and vertical are pretty obvious. We could also have a mixture of the horizontal and vertical, so diagonal and anti-diagonal. Diagonal is clockwise tilted by 45 degrees, and anti-diagonal is counterclockwise tilted by 45 degrees. And we could also have circular polarizations. You can remember the left circular polarization by thinking that the direction is the same as the way you close your left hand, like this. And the other one, of course, using the right hand. Okay? Now the wave plate. Let's first talk about the half wave plate. Say we have light propagating toward the half wave plate. As I said, we base the polarization on the electric field, right? So this is a vertically polarized light. Wave plate has something called fast and slow axis, and you can rotate this axis by rotating the wave plate. All right, let's see how wave plate changes the polarization of light. I'm just gonna show it with a vertically polarized light. So starting with zero degrees, it's just gonna provide vertical polarization so nothing has changed. Now let's try 22.5 degrees. That will give anti-diagonal polarization. This time 45 degrees. So you see how the polarization vector got rotated by 90 degrees when I rotated the wave plate by only 45 degrees. So the amount of rotation in the polarization vector is a double of the half wave plate's rotation, all right? Now let's try 67.5 degrees, which is the three quarters of the 90 degrees. That will give diagonal polarization. And lastly, the 90 degrees. It will give us back the vertically polarized light. Now, you see that a half-wave plate can create only horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and anti-diagonal polarizations. So a half-wave plate cannot create circular polarizations. Remember that, okay? Now we have the quarter-wave plate. Again, let's see how the vertically polarized light changes. Starting off by 0 degrees. Again, it will remain the same. Now 22.5 degrees. Hmm, elliptical right polarization. So it's not perfectly circular. Now 45 degrees. Now we are getting the right circular polarization. 
now three quarters of 90 degrees. Back to the elliptical right polarization. And lastly, 90 degrees. Back to the vertical polarization. Additionally, you could create left circular polarization by rotating the halfway plate 45 degrees the other way in the counterclockwise direction. And as you can see, this time, we cannot create linear polarizations except itself, the vertical one. So, let's see why all these are happening. Again, let's look at the half-wave play first. We have an electromagnetic wave. And again, we're basing on the electric polarization. So let's forget about the magnetic polarization. I know the wave looks tilted, but let's say this is the vertical polarization. And it's kind of weird the one looking at this with our head tilted. I'm suggesting this because we have to look at this with respect to the fast and slow axis of the wave plate that is rotated minus 45 degrees. Now, our electric polarization vector is going to be decomposed with respect to the fast and slow axis. And then the slow component will go a half wave slower than the fast component. I'll show it to you again. Watch. Now, look at this. The total polarization becomes like this. And what is this? Horizontal polarization. Again, we are looking at this with our head 45 degrees tilted. So this is how the halfway plate changes polarizations. Now let's rotate our wave plate and our head more. So like negative 70 degrees, let's say. So again, we should decompose into fast and slow polarization components, right? Then shift the slow component by half of the wavelength. I'm going to show it again. Now look, the polarization changed, but it's still a linear polarization. This way, we could never create a circular polarization regardless of the rotation. Does it now make sense? Same analogy for the quarter wave plate. Again, think that this is a vertically polarized light. Actually, it wouldn't matter anymore as long as it's linear. As the light passes through the quarter wave plate, now the slow component will only shift by a quarter of the wave. I'll show it to you again. So now this is a different story. Because the two components are out of phase, like not matching each other, the total polarization will look like it's rotating. Sorry for the bad visualization. I made this video using PowerPoint, so it was hard. You can probably search for a better visualization on the internet. But anyway, because the two components will always be out of phase like this, we can never get any linear polarizations but the original itself. So that was a quick clarification on the polarizations and the wave plate. I hope this video has saved some of your time. I'll be posting another video on the same topic, but this time with some mathematical details. It'll be important to understand the phenomena mathematically when you study quantum entanglement. If you liked it, please like and subscribe to my channel. It motivates me a lot and hope to see you next time.